Hello and welcome to class. Flo here again with a fun vinyasa flow practice today. If you care about the labels of the practice and the levels, then this would be more of an intermediate to advanced practice just because the up leveling is happening quite fast and there's also some transitions in there that definitely are not for beginners. All you need for today's class is your mat. If you like to use blocks, of course, have them nearby if you want to finish with a meditation or a nice and long shavasana, which I highly recommend then also have a blanket or some layers nearby so you can get comfortable towards the end. When you feel ready to begin, let's come into a seated position at the back of your mat. Close your eyes, sit tall. Take the next few breaths to arrive. You're now here. You're doing the practice. You already clicked the video, made it so far through the intro. So let's just stay and practice. Take the time to connect to yourself through movement, through breath. You're diving a little bit deeper into the stillness within. Notice the air coming in and out through the nose. And slowly set a breath and a rhythm of a breath up that works well for you. A rhythm that you want to maintain throughout the entire practice. A rhythm that you want to maintain no matter how challenging or how gentle the movements are. It's not about the poses, we're not here to do all the funky transitions. We're here to move mindfully, transition mindfully, feel our bodies, connect to your beautiful body. So that this awareness of your body can spread throughout the entire day. That you're always connected to this vehicle that's bringing you through life. That your heart and soul and your spirit resides in. And through the breath we are exploring a little bit the depth of our heart. Who you truly are step by step, every day a little bit more. Every day a little bit deeper. Let's take five more breaths here. Truly connect to yourself and to your purpose for this practice today. Slowly blink your eyes open. Let's come into a tabletop position. Come onto all fours. Untuck the toes, round your back. And slowly from the hips upwards, we're making a wave movement through the spine. So we will eventually all meet in cow pose. And then slowly return back to cat. Segmenting the spine, moving nice and slow. One more just like that. And that's all meat and cat. And return back to neutral. Now we're doing some barrel rolls with the spine. So you lower the, the belly down, you 
extend your spine and then you go to the sides as if you want to reach to the side with your mid side of your upper body then through cat over to the left down and to the right up and back left and down switch directions to the left and up to the right and down one more left and up right and down back to neutral come onto your toes slide the hands back keep the arms straight and lean forward so we're just leaning and feeling into the wrists maybe rock gently side to side see how it feels very good slowly lean back bring the palms together bring the back side of your right hand down to the ground press down with your left keep both arms straight then start to bend the right arm back towards six o'clock once it's bent bring it over to three back to six and straighten back to th six over to three back to six straighten one more and switch sides now you bend the left arm to six o'clock move the left elbow towards nine back to six and straighten bend to six to nine back to six straighten last one very good sit on the heels interlace your fingers roll out your hands roll out the wrists Switch directions. Shake out the hands. Very good. Let's meet in a plank pose. Tuck the tailbone, engage the core. Push the ground away. And with tucking the tailbone, I mean more of finding length in the back line of your body. So from the neck, lengthen down the back, through the hips, the glutes, down the legs. So it's about this balance between the tension in the front line, the front side of your body, and the back line, the back side of your body. Shift forward, come high onto the toes, shift back. Shift forward, five, back, four, back, three, two, one hold there keep shifting forward five four three two one back to plank and up and back to downward dog move your dog in a way that feels good bend one knee then the other i like to rotate the heels to one side this gives a nice stretch for the side body at least in my body and over to the other side and back to center very good from down dog we now really connect to the breath maybe the breath already changed and you want to bring it back to that breath that you set in the beginning of your practice can you slow it down can you breathe deeper with more control it's easy to breathe fast especially when the heart rate goes up so we consciously and continuously come back to the breath to slow it down from this down dog on an inhale roll through the spine forward to plank and back to downward dog two more just like that forward to plank back to downward dog one more lift the heels as you move forward with that wave through the spine back to downward dog if you want you can bring the feet a bit wider apart we're rolling forward through plank then engage the glutes lower the hips for an upward facing dog 
variation, look straight ahead, and then move from the head back and up like a wave through the spine to down dog. Let's do two more. Last one. Very good, let's all meet back in downward dog. From here we bring the right knee towards the left wrist. And then bring the right leg up and back to a three-legged dog. Lower the right shoulder down, lengthen the right side body more. Now shift forward, bring the left shoulder over the left hand and land the right foot behind you. Lower the hips, bring the right arm in front of you. Now we slowly move through wild thing, lift the hips up, bring the right knee towards the right arm, look to the front right corner of the mat and step the right foot there. Lizard lunge, both hands down, and move those hips around if it feels good for you. Slow the breath down. If you wanna put the elbows down, the forearms down, all good. If you put, wanna put the left knee down, of course, go ahead and do so. Let's all meet back in this old lunge. Bring the left hand a little bit more to the left edge of the mat. Reach your right arm forward, step the left leg through. Right arm in front of your chest and step it back. Let's do two more. Step it through, back. Step it through and back. We meet in this old lunge, but on the fingertips Take a deep breath in. On your exhale, straighten both legs, send the hips back. Inhale, bend. Exhale, straighten. Inhale, bend. Three more. Very good. Bring both hands down to the ground, lower the left knee down to the mat, bend your left leg with your right hand, reach for the left foot. Once you have it, extend the foot away from you. So you feel a pull on the right shoulder. You're engaging and activating your left quad and then relax and pull the foot towards you. You can use a strap or a belt here if this foot is not available if it's just too far away. And release, back to lizard lunge. Now keep the right hand on the ground, create a really good foundation with the right hand. The right hand is inside the right foot. Your left arm is reaching forward, press into your right palm, and extend the right leg back for awkward plank. Hold for five, four, three, two, and one. Keep the left arm lifted and let's come to a two-legged dog. Send the right leg up and back, but try to not use your left hand. So you're only on the right hand and the left foot. Really open the right shoulder, bring the right ear to the right arm. It's a lot of balancing, lots of control. Now both hands down, three-legged dog. Readjust if you need to. Take a deep breath in, come high onto your left toes. Exhale, right knee to the chest. Round your back. Keep the right leg hugging into the chest. Shift forward, bend your arms. Straighten, bend, straighten. 
three, two, and one. Crescent lunge. Step the foot between the hands, rise up. Reach both arms forward, up and over the head. Tilt the upper body forward, straighten your left leg. Hold. Reach the right arm back behind you and rise back up for open crescent twist. Bring the hands to the heart palms touch and then hook that left elbow outside the right thigh straighten the left leg crescent twist press into your palms lengthen through the spine straighten your left leg now stay in that twist try to only lift the left elbow up off the thigh skandhasana to the left straighten the right leg bend the left Move to the front of the mat, left hand down, wild thing. Step the right foot up and over, left shoulder over, left hand. On your exhale, right hand down. Kind of a side plank on the right but this time extended side plank, so extend, extend the right leg through. Land the foot, starfish. Reach your left arm up and over the head, lift your hips higher up, really lengthen the left side body. On your exhale, lower the hips down. Seated straddle forward fold, bring the feet wide apart, and when you're ready, fold forward and down. Make sure both feet are flexed, the toes are pointing towards you. Let's take three nice controlled breaths here. Notice how the heart rate is coming already down by simply slowing down the breath. Walk the hands back. Bring your right hand in front of your right hip. Maybe close the legs a little bit again. We're coming back up for starfish. Stay only with the right hand and the left foot on the ground. Keep your left hand lifted. We pull the right foot out, lift your left heel up. One more time for awkward plank. Very good. Now connect your right knee to your left elbow, underneath the body, back to awkward plank. Connect, extend. Connect, extend. One more. Beautiful plank. Both hands down, both feet down. Our new resting pose, plank pose. You can of course set the knees down if you want to. We're shifting forward, come high onto the toes, bend your arms, chaturanga, hold, elbows in, shift forward, five, four, three, two, one, plank. Knees down, elbows down. Glide forward and through as you exhale. Inhale to upward facing dog. Pull the head back. Broaden the collarbones. On your exhale, downward dog.
deep controlled mindful breaths. Very good work so far. Continue with the practice. Reach the left knee towards the right wrist. And then three-legged dog, left leg, up and back, open stack the hips. Shift forward, right shoulder over right hand, land the left foot behind you, lower the hips down, left arm in front of you. Lift the hips back up, left knee towards the left armpit, look to the front left corner of the mat, step the foot there. Lizard lunge, both hands inside the left foot. Move around if it feels good for you. I already started moving because it just feels so good. There's no need to hold still here in this pose. Now slide the, or move the right hand to the right edge of your mat, reach your left arm forward, step the right leg through, point the right toes, left arm in front of you, step it back. Let's do two more. One more. Back to the third lunge. Come onto the fingertips. On the inhale, lizard lunge, lower the hips down. On your exhale, send the hips back and straighten both legs. Inhale, lizard. Exhale, straighten. Inhale, lizard. Exhale, straighten. Two more. Back to lizard, right hand down, let, release the right knee down, bend the right leg with your left hand, reach for the right foot. First extend the right leg, and then relax the right quad, pull the foot towards your hips. Focus not only on the right quad, but really lengthen from the right knee up through the leg, through the right hip, the entire front side of the body, even down to the neck. And release back to a lizard. And we'll bring the left hand down to the ground inside the left foot. Your right arm is reaching forward. Again, this funky transition now to awkward plank. Try to not shift back so much to make it easy. <clears throat> try to lift the left foot up and then extend it back. Awkward plank. For five, four, three, two, one. Keep the right arm lifted, two-legged dog. Send the hips back, the left leg up. Use your right arm to balance. Really opening the left shoulder, just like you would in a downward dog. So move the ear to the arm. Use your left fingertips to balance. And now set both hands down, three-legged dog. Readjust if you need to. Bend the left knee, open, stack the hips. Inhale, come high onto your right toes. Exhale, left knee to the chest. Shift forward. Keep the knee there. Close to the chest. Shift forward. Bend your arms and straighten. Four more. Three. Two. And one. Very good. Crescent lunge. Rise up. T 
tilt your upper body forward. Keep the arms up and over the head, straighten the right leg. Draw the navel in. Soften the breath. Can you lift your arms a bit higher to the ears? Reach your left arm back and rise back up for open crescent twist. Connect the palms, hook the right elbow outside the left thigh, pull the navel in, straighten the right leg, inhale to lengthen through the spine, on your exhale rotate and twist to the left. Keep the legs as they are, only lift the right elbow, the right arm up off the left thigh. Skandasana to the right. Bend your right knee, straighten the left. Move to the front of the mat. Right hand down, wild thing. Keep the right shoulder over the right wrist. Lift your hips up high. Create more length from the left toes all the way to the left hand. And slowly release, left hand down, extended side plank on the left hand. Land the foot, starfish. And lower the hips down. For seated straddle, forward fold. It's getting quite hot here for me as well. I already trained two hours of jiu-jitsu in the morning and now all day filming. So definitely a challenging practice. So for me too, coming back to the breath, walk the hands forward, fold forward, and all the way I'm talking and guiding you, it's even more of a challenge and even more of a practice for me. But we're all doing our best, me here and you on the other side. That, that's really all we're asking for. That's all that the uh, universe wants to see that you're doing your best. We don't want to half a half ass through life. We really want to go deeper, leave the surface by doing our best, go deep into life. Sometimes we discover things that are a little bit uncomfortable, but they're part of it. They, they make us feel alive. Let's walk the hands back and let's set up for starfish on the left hand. We now keep the right hand lifted, maybe reach it forward already to open up a little bit more on the right side of our body. We really like to do starfish that way. It's a nice side body, lateral body stretch. We pull the left foot out, extend it back. At the same time, lift the right heel up when you're ready for awkward plank. And we hold and then connect the right elbow to the left knee. Awkward plank. Three more. Last two. Last one. 
back to plank. Very good. Shift forward, come high onto the toes, bend your arms, chaturanga. Five, four, three, two, one. Lower all the way down. Untuck the toes. We're lifting the thighs up and then the chest, the hands. Basically, we lift everything up. We're holding for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Release. Shake out the hips. Now for this next one, it's a little bit of shoulder mobility on the belly. I will slide back so you can see me better. You can keep the forehead and the chest down on the ground. You can also, to make it harder, keep the chest lifted. And that's the variation I will do. We'll just do two rounds. Uh, if you have been here for a while on this channel, then you know this exercise has already, but it always feels good and maybe it's new for you today and we can learn something new. Great. So either forehead on the ground or lifted, we place the hands behind our head, untuck your toes, lift the elbows up, now lift the hands up, extend the arms forward, swim the arms back, internally rotate the arms, then start to bend your arms and connect your hands again palms facing upwards, bring the hands down to your back. Keep the chest lifted, let's reverse it, lift the elbows up, lift the hands up, straighten the arms back, swim them forward, externally rotate the arms, bend them, palms down, touch the back of your head. One more round, lift up, reach forward, swim back, keep the chest lifted, Internally rotate, bend, palms up, hands down to the lower back. Lift up, straighten back, reverse, swim forward, bend the arms, palms down to the back of the head and relax. Really nice one to do after your practice or towards the end. You can also do it super slow and you can do several rounds of this to focus being keeping the arms lifted as high as possible. Now upward facing dog or any other back bend that feels good for you, on your way to downward facing dog. Downward dog is where we all meet. We'll from here meet in a squat, so you can step float, handstand to feet, outside the hands. For a deep squat position. And from here we bring the backs of the hands together, straighten the arms forward and down, round your back. Release, lift the heels up, heels closer together, extend the arms out to the sides. And let's come back to this closed position, heels down. And back to squat. Let's do one more round. Close it again. Back to squat. If squat is still a big challenge for you, I highly encourage you to check out the mobility training playlist. There's a whole playlist on mobility exercises specifically for the squat, for toe mobility, ankle mobility, and also for the hips. 
And then doing that a few times a week, in addition to the yoga practice and in addition to practicing squatting, the squat will come, but it needs some more specific training. Let's enjoy the squat for a couple more breaths, just to really slow the heart rate down so that we can continue with the cool down of our practice, the more gentle side of the practice, which is fairly quick and simple. Squat is one of those positions that are very natural for humans, even though right now you might think and feel that a squat is impossible for you to do. I'm pretty sure that as a kid you were squatting. And so from then to now something happens or something happened that you unlearned or forgot about this position. And oftentimes it's from the lack of enough movement throughout the day, too much sitting, too much inactivity, the wrong shoes, whatever it is, there are so many things. But if you think about it, that the body is meant to move for hours and hours every day. And you might do this 30 minute yoga class and then you go to your work and you sit for eight hours at your desk and in your car. It's really not enough. The balance of moving for 30 minutes, maybe some walking and then sitting is just not there. So it doesn't mean that you need to move for eight hours a day if you're sitting for eight hours a day, but it's good to increase it a little bit and it doesn't need to be any, any crazy workout or anything in the gym or a yoga practice, although beneficial. It could just be more walking, more getting up and stretching throughout maybe taking the bike, maybe some swimming, just uh, different modalities of movement. Anyway, that's a different topic and it's enough of the squat talk today. Let's set the hips down. Reverse tabletop just to stretch out the shoulders. They did quite a bit of work today, just a little bit. Continue with the breath. Fingers pointing forward, lift the hips up. Keep the arms straight and press into the palms. Move the hips forward and back. And the next time you move forward, set those hips down all the way. Bend the arms. Deep breath in, lift the chest up. Exhale, bend your arms back. Send the elbows back. And release. Slide the hips back, cross your legs, find a comfortable cross-legged seat. I will rotate to my side and you can stay wherever you are. Sit nice and tall, close your eyes. Continue observing the breath. Notice the surface beneath you that you're sitting on. Notice your feet, your ankles, your shins, how they're feeling. Maybe you feel the shins a bit from the squat, maybe the ankles. It's all good. Just notice. No need to change it, no need to analyze it. Feel the knees, the thighs, the hips slowly moving through the body. Upwards into the spine, the lower back, mid back, the belly, the chest, the shoulders. Down the arms, 
the elbows, the forearms, the wrists. Feel the fingers. Back up the arms, lengthen up through the neck. Feel the front side of your neck underneath your chin. your mouth, your tongue, your forehead, simply take in this current state. One of the huge benefits of this practice of yoga asana, the movement practice of yoga, is that it increases your body awareness. The connection and feeling for your own body is being strengthened and it will also extend off the mat. So throughout the day you will have a better feeling for your body. It will also increase your proprioception, the feeling of where your body is in space. And movement is one of the important things to keep the body healthy and to strengthen the immune system. daily movement, daily exercise in combination with a daily mindfulness practice, meditation, spending time in nature, breath work, breathing exercises, as well as a good diet, a good whole food plant-based diet good hydration and good sleep. All these things will support your health, strengthen the immune system and keep this vehicle of your body healthy and strong as you go through this journey of life. And these are the things you need to do every single day. Sometimes a bit more, a bit stronger, sometimes a bit less. But it needs to be done every day for good results and good health. And knowing about it now, what are you going to do with it? Are you already going to plan, once this class is done, when you have a free moment, plan the next session for the next day, get some good food, go to bed earlier, drink some more? Meaning, are you going to take action? Or is this just another piece of knowledge that will reside in your head? And you say, yeah, I know, I know these things. But what are you actually doing? Knowledge is useless without action. Bring your hands to the heart. Finish up your practice here if you want to. Continue with the breath work, more meditation, or come onto your back for Shavasana. Totally up to you. If you want to continue with your day, that's also perfectly fine. A, I wish you a wonderful day ahead or a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you very much for practicing with me today and for, lo for allowing me again to share my practice with you. Support the channel by liking, 
the video, leave a comment below and subscribe to the channel. With love and gratitude, namaste.